Our speaker this evening has over 20 years of industry experience, the last five being at Apple. Please welcome the senior consulting engineer of Apple, Ronnie Rios. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, everybody, for uh, being here today. I'm really excited. Um, we did this uh, very similar event a couple of months ago, and it was really great. Um, those people who are here, who came to that event? I think it was like in June we did that. Anybody was here? If you came to the June one. No? You came? Awesome. So sorry to use almost the same. <laughs> Everybody else is great because I can reuse all my jokes, which is awesome. So uh, my, again, my name is Ronnie Ruiz. I'm Senior Consulting Engineer at FileMaker. What that means is I get to do this. I get to talk to customers, to uh, developers, future developers, and tell them what the platform is and what can be uh, used for it and kind of help them overcome technical barriers on their, for their own projects. So which is a really fun job. It means I get to play around with the product a lot and talk with customers. Um, with me today is uh, Mia Roop, who's over here. She's a partner manager. So if uh, you want to talk with her, if you want to learn more about the platform, if you want to get involved with the platform uh, as well, she's a great person to talk to. Uh, we've got business cards um, for her back there in the table in the back. So uh, help yourself and um, get her contact information and uh, talk with, uh, with us. Awesome. So today we're going to be talking about workplace, uh, using workplace innovation platforms to create SQL uh, data-driven apps. So uh, hopefully it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun for you guys. It was a lot of fun for me to uh, get things uh, uh, prepared. So for those of you who are um, usuals to these meetup, I am going to give you a fair warning right now. This is going to be weird. <laughs> this is not going to be your typical presentation for a couple of reasons. First off, I am not the CEO, CTO, VP of anything, uh, co-founder of any type of startup. As a matter of fact, I'm not allowed to choose the, the color of the paint of my own bedroom. So I am not going to help you. Uh, show you anything that will help you do queries faster or anything like that, and I will be not be analyzing billions of records today for you. As a matter of fact, the company I work for has little um, interest in solving for infinite uh, scalability and infinite availability. So what are we about? Well, first off, FileMaker, is, as uh, uh, Eric alluded earlier, is a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple. We have been since our inception uh, over 20 years now. Apple was never bought us. We were uh, born within, uh, within Apple. And if, even if you don't know us, we are a global company. Our software is in 15 different languages. We've got offices all around the world. We've got over a million act active subscribers. We've got over 4 million downloads of our, uh, of our mobile uh, app, FileMaker Go. We've got uh, over 1,000 uh, partners over, uh, all around the world. We actually have two of our uh, partners here today. I'll let them uh, speak a little bit later. So we do have a very... Um, you know, stable and, and uh, we got this, the stability and, and the scale that our customers come to rely on. We've been around for a long time. So what are we about? We're about solving problems. We're about giving tools to people to solve problems, right? We're the problem solvers, problem solver. So how do we do that? Well, the thing starts really out with, uh, with the changing workplace and, and the promise of technology, right? Technology is supposed to uh, new technology is supposed to help us, you know, grow, be innovative, and um, and help us get the work done, right? And the the uh, you know uh, digital transformation is supposed to uh, weed out the winners from the losers and help us establish new um, new standards of of, of uh, performance, right? That's that's the promise we hear. But the the reality is, you know, it's getting harder and harder every time to to get to move the business forward, right? It, it feels like. No matter what we do, things are getting harder, and sometimes we don't understand why. And we come into our office in the morning, and we see stacks of paper on the desk. We've got post-it notes all over, uh, all over the wall. We've got our inboxes full of emails, and it just gets overwhelming, right? And we get this feeling that, that we're falling behind. So why is that? Well, it's very likely that the technology that businesses are using are uh, not allowing them to kind of reach their limit. Very likely, uh, businesses are, uh, are using appliance apps, right? Appliance apps are very important. They, they tackle very specific tasks and do it very well, things like email and file sharing and things like that. Um, but they're, they're not about driving the business forward, right? So you know, say your coffee machine, right? It's probably critical <laughs> to your, to your workday, but it doesn't grow innovation. It doesn't, it doesn't help you grow or, or innovate, right? It's not a tool for, for, for growth or, or innovation. So appliance apps can only get you so far. So what happens is people get into kind of like a work rut. 
right? Work with businesses, and you've seen this, you've probably seen this either yourselves or people in your own organization, where they feel like they're in a treadmill, they're doing the same thing over and over and over, but the business doesn't seem to be moving forward, right? And we've got, um, People spending a lot of time trying to find a document that's buried somewhere in somebody's inbox or in some you know, cloud storage or, or in some chat channel or something like that. And there might be some steady cash flow in, in the business, but probably not taking the trajectory that we want. And no matter what we do, things are getting worse and worse and, we, and just progress just seems to stall. Right? And we see this every day and businesses are going through this. And what happens is, you know, Appliance apps just are not built for that. They're not built to, to innovate, to change. So, you know, small and even uh, mis mis-sized organizations, they look at something else. They say, well, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll look into uh, enterprise systems. But for most of those small and mid-sized, that's, that's out of reach, right? It's cost prohibitive. And even for us, for, for uh, a lot of us that work in large organizations that already have enterprise systems, you know, full blown ERP and CRMs, even for us, right, making changes to those systems they might be cost prohibitive as, as well. Because even if the organization has unlimited resources, that department, that business unit does not, right? There's a budget. So, so there's a big gap here. And so what we're trying to do is, um, since we can't customize those things, well, you know, how do we, you know, how do we uh, get out of that work rut? Well, you know, us and people all around the organization, we're, we believe that there's problem solvers out there, right? And we believe problem solvers are everywhere and they can be anybody, not just those who are you know, professional developers, but those who are knowledge workers, who understand, who are uh, kind of um, uh, experts at, in, in their field, may not have a, uh, you know, a lot of experience developing, but also us, right, as, as developers in the organization. So we believe that. We believe that uh, innovation happens in the work, it can happen in the workplace, and businesses succeed when these problem solvers have the tools necessary to, to, to innovate, to, to succeed, right? So a workplace innovation platform does that. It fills in the gap between appliance apps and, um, and those enterprise systems. So the idea is to, is to give kind of the, to help uh, people in an organization solve those unique challenges uh, by themselves. So a workplace innovation platform has these distinct um, kind of features or attributes, right? A, a workplace innovation platform should give you all the tools to design and create your custom apps uh, for yourself, be able to share those so that everybody in the team can access those and, and be on the same page no matter what device they're using. Um, and be able to also integrate those apps with pretty much anything out there with uh, services and uh, existing enterprise systems and IoT and be able to uh, welcome new technologies like machine learning in, into the fray and have those accessible inside the, those, those apps. So the idea is really is to make technology available to everybody, right? So, it's not about no code or low code or even pro, you know, pro code, right? FileMaker is kind of that, that, that uh, kind of just right fit in between all of those where everybody, even those who don't have any experience with programming and all the way up to those who are professional programmers can take advantage of that and work together and create uh, those custom business apps for the organization. So that's what we do. That's our promise. That's what we're trying to, to build. Now, when I usually say this, people... <laughs> Uh, think, well, you know, these tools like that, they, there's this kind of um, misconception that just because you don't have to be fluent in, I, I don't know, Python or C Sharp, that there's, uh, that these tools lack sophistication. So I'm going to show you two things, I'm going to show you two examples here to kind of demystify that, uh, that concept. I'm going to show you screenshots from two solutions that were built using the FileMaker platform, using these exact same tools. Um, that kind of go a little bit, there, there's a lot of complexity here and you can see kind of a better idea of, of what's possible to do with the platform. There's another reason why I want to show you this because I'm going to do a demo later and I am not going to even close to these things. <laughs> uh, so I'll give you an idea of what's possible. This, uh, this solution that we're going to see here is from one of our partners. It's a full-blown ERP. It does everything you can, you can think of. It keeps track of customers and orders and purchases. Uh, full accounting built into it. This, I remember this solution being originally built for manufacturing, but they've ex since expanded to kind of include a service um, uh, industry as well. I mean, everything you can think of from a sophisticated and uh, complete ERP is built in here into this into the system. And because it's built into, the, into this using our platform, it can be available from pretty much any device. The other solution I'm going to show you from, is from another partner of ours. And <clears throat> this one is pretty interesting because it, it started out, um, they started out using it themselves as a way to solve a problem that they had. They work in the creative industry and they 
found a lack of really good tools to kind of manage the, uh, the creative process and, and doing estimates and project management. So they decided to build their own and they've been so successful they started uh, selling it themselves. It's really, really nice. Very, very complex. It manages everything from, it does project management, scheduling, budgeting, uh, invoicing, everything you can think of. Really, really nice. It has some really great integration points as well. So that's really, really nice, right? So just, again, it's an idea so they can see that it, it can be very sophisticated as well. We're not talking about just simple, uh, you know, uh, small, uh, small apps. It can be very, very complex and it can uh, accomplish a lot of things. So this is a quick overview of what the platform looks like before I kind of dive into the demo. So I want to give you an idea. We talked about how these platforms um, do, they create, allow you to share, and also allow you to integrate. So in the FileMaker platform, you see all the way at the left over here, FileMaker Pro Advance is the, the app that we use to create in our platform. It's a desktop application. It runs on both Mac and Windows alike. So everything you create is completely cross-platform. And then the sharing part goes into either FileMaker Cloud and FileMaker Server. We've got two options for sharing. Uh, FileMaker Server software you install on you know, your computer, you put it in your own data center, either Mac or Windows once again. FileMaker Cloud is our offering through um, Amazon Web Services. So if we partner with them, uh, you can go through AWS Marketplace and you can have an instance up and running in about 20 minutes, I want to say. I created one the other day in about 12 minutes from my iPhone. It's, <laughs> it's very, very easy. You go through the Marketplace, start it up, and you're up and running very, very quickly. So once your apps are hosted there, then it can be accessed through um, any one of these, uh, these different types of clients. We have a native iOS app called FileMaker Go. It's free from the App Store. You can download it at any time. Now, we also have an iOS SDK, so you can take these apps and create complete standalone um, uh, native iOS apps out of those as well. You can access from those. Um, FileMaker Pro Advanced, the, the app that you use to create, it can also work as a client, so you can consume those apps on Mac or Windows through this, using the same software. And we also have a web client, which I'll show you um, later today as well, which takes your apps and completely transforms it on the fly to HTML5. There's no coding. You don't have to learn anything about HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. We do that for you. So you develop once, and you deploy into all of these at the same time, which is really nice. It saves you a lot, a lot of time. So create, sharing, right, and accessing. But talk also about integrating. So one of the great things about the platform is it's highly uh, open to integration. So we've got a lot of integration points. We've got a built-in REST API. We've got curl library built in, JSON uh, functions for parsing and creating JSON data. Uh, PHP XML API as well, ODBC and JDBC available as source and as a client. We have a plugin uh, SDK in C++, so if you want to do like hardware integrations or, or add a f some functionality that we haven't thought about uh, that you want to do, you can absolutely do it. There's a huge market also for these plugins, so you know, before you start creating stuff, you might want to look around. Somebody probably already uh, has done it, right? We've seen really great integration with scanners and printers and some really uh, uh, barcode readers I've seen and some other really cool stuff there. So this is kind of platform and a quick overview. So now comes the fun part. <laughs> I'm going to get down and we're going to create an app completely from scratch. And we're going to do something really interesting. I'm going to create, it. I'm going to create an app. Um, we're going to deploy it. We're going to have it uh, running on a desktop computer, on an iPad, and also on a web browser all at the same time. We're going to build it from scratch. We're going to integrate it with SQL, with uh, MySQL. And we're going to do it in about, what do I got? I got about 20 minutes to do that. Cool? All right, let's get started. Not a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. <laughs> All right, so let's break out of this. And let me change my display so you guys can see what I see. All right. OK, so. Video got messed up there. All right, I'm going to start out here with a completely blank app I've got over here. And I'm going to start, I'm going to cheat a little bit today. I'm going to take, I've got two spreadsheets over here. And the reason I'm using spreadsheets is because it, has, it contains data already. It doesn't, I don't have to type in anything. And I don't want to start typing field names either. So I'm going to cheat and use that. That's the only thing. But this is also how a lot of our customers start. They already have existing data from whatever source, maybe an export from an existing system. So they'll export that out. And we're going to use that to kind of feed um, our, uh, our solution we're going to create today. So I've got here a spreadsheet with assets. 
kind of like cameras and that, that sort of stuff. We're going to keep track of assets uh, that are coming in and out of, um, you know, we got some, uh, some inventory in, in our organization and I got another spreadsheet that has that history, right? The check in and check out of those assets. So what I'm going to do is here from my app, I am going to do import, import that file. Uh, go. Assets, click okay. open over here, and I'm going to tell FileMaker, look, create a brand new table with that spreadsheet. Now, what I'm going to do is also here in the bottom, I'm going to say, look, don't import that first row. That first row contains column headings. Use those to name the fields. That way, I don't have to type anything, which is really nice. Click import, and that's it. So we've got all that data is living right now in my app. I can throw away that, that spreadsheet. I don't need it anymore. This app lives on my server has all the backup and all the security and all that fun stuff. But just because it's already on the server, I can do some really crazy things. So for example, uh, let's see if I can bring up my iPad. I've got my iPad over here. This is just sharing the screen over there. And I've already downloaded FileMaker Go, which is our little native app from the App Store, completely free. And I'm going to navigate over here to host, search for my host. And there's that little app. I'm going to go ahead and tap that over there. And I got a slow network apparently. All right, well, that's doing that. So my app lives over there. It's, it's on the server. I can access it from, from my iPad. I can also access it from a web browser. So I'm going to turn here my web browser, web, uh, web direct, turn that on. And while that decides to change, I'm going to open up here my web browser. And here's the app that we just started creating. Navigate here to the screen. Well, we brought in those assets, and I've got it there already. So move that over here. There we go. And I think my iPad already refreshed. So there we go. So we've got an app that didn't exist a few minutes ago, didn't have any data, and now it's accessible from all three dynamic devices. Now, what I'm seeing here on the iPad, on the desktop, and also on the web browser is not a copy of the data that's on the server. It's actually a direct link. It's completely live. What does that mean? If I come over here to my iPad, for example, and I make some changes, so it's here sort of photo camera. I say it's going to be, uh, I should have, I don't know, video camera. As soon as I make those changes, tap out, you're going to notice that it automatically changed everywhere, including in the web browser. Anybody a web developer here? Yeah? OK. You know that that's <laughs> right. no web programming whatsoever, and that automatically updates by itself. And it works in all directions. So if I make a change over here in the web browser, and I make changes back over here to, I don't know, photo camera, it should automatically change everywhere. So it's a live connection, and I don't have to. There's no coding, right? I didn't do anything. It's automatically, there's that automatic propagation, uh, data propagation built into the platform. And a lot of you are probably wondering right now, as great um, DBAs, you're probably thinking, what happens if I try to modify the same data at the same time from two different devices, right? Well, let's try that out. So if I start making the changes over here on this iPad, and then back at the office, we see that somebody's trying to ch try to change the same thing at the same time, FileMaker's pretty smart. It's got record locking built in. So at this point, I can click OK and wait for the other person to be done. Um, or I can send them a message and be nice about it. I don't know. There you go. So you can let them know. All right, the boss needs access to this record. I'm going to stop making changes over here. We'll go back over here and change this back to the way it was. All right, so automatic data propagation is built into the platform. Completely free. We don't have to do anything. There was no data binding or anything like that. It just kind of worked that way. Now, I'll tell you one thing. We have a desktop app, we've got a web app, and we've got a mobile app. But I'll be the first one to tell you, that looks ugly, <laughs> right? And especially the mobile one, right? This iPad, I kind of kind of zoom in to see things. There's all this wasted space over there. I did say we are an Apple company. We are huge on design. We want to make sure that everything looks good, and we want to make it really hard for you to make ugly things. So everything that you need to build really cool-looking apps is built into the platform. So we're going to do just that. We're going to create a brand new screen, or how we call them in FileMaker, layouts. We're going to build a brand new layout, and we're going to make it specifically for the iPad. So it start looking really nice. So from the desktop, just hide these things. I'm going to click on this button here on the top right. It says Edit Layout. And that puts me in 
that puts me in what we call layout mode, which is a design mode in Pharmica. That means I can make changes to these, to the UI, and add new, uh, new layouts as well. So I'm going to add a brand new layout over here. We'll call this one here, I don't know, assets. We'll call this iPad because it's for an iPad. I can choose what type of device I want, and that what it does is it helps me choose the dimensions of this layout. I can choose how I want the data to be viewed. I just want to view kind of a forum view, one record at a time. And I want the screen orientation by default to be landscape. So I'll click here at finish. And that's it. We've created our first layout or screen in FileMaker. Yay! Now it's completely blank, right? There's nothing there, but I'm gonna show you something really interesting. I'm gonna go back over here to the iPad. I'm gonna navigate here to this menu here at the top, over here where it says layout. But my iPad is really slow today. While that's doing that, I'll go back here to the web browser and do the same thing. Go here where it says layout. And that layout that we just created that didn't exist a few seconds ago is already there. Now, I know it's blank, there's nothing there. But we just created a screen that didn't exist a few seconds ago, and now everybody has access to that, right? Including from a web browser. That's pretty nice. The reason is, not only is data automatically propagated everywhere, but also changes in the design. So I don't have to worry about what? Reinstalling or redeploying. All that's taken care of for me. So I don't have to spend time and money doing all those, all those fun things, right? I see fun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to leave this up here while we make changes, because I want you to see what happens. So I'm going to go back into layout mode to make some changes. Uh, over here. And let's put some fields here, right? We brought in some fields from that spreadsheet. I got some fields here on the left. So I'm just going to select a few of them and just drag and drop. In FileMaker, most of it is drag and drop stuff, right? We make it very easy for you to create stuff. So maybe we'll make this bigger over here. And just for fun, I'll just save the changes so you can see what happens. So I'm going to bring up my iPad once again. And there it is. It's already available. And this is live, right? I can start browsing through these. I can start making changes. You know, I don't have to make it available to everybody, but right, this is a demo. So <laughs> we're making it available to everybody. But it, you know, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to reinstall or redeploy. And even in the web browser, that's available as well. So it automatically updates there for me. So I'm going to keep making changes over here. Let's make, do some interesting things. I'm going to add a new field. I got some really nice photos of these assets. So I'm going to create a photo field. So uh, by the way, these are the different data types in FileMaker. Right? We've got very simplified. We want to make it very accessible. You don't have to say what size the text are or what the limit is. There's text, numbers, date, time, timestamp, container fields, which is our, our blob, our binary um, storage, storage type field. So I'll choose container. I don't need a label, and I just drag and drop. Containers can store pretty much anything that has a 4 gigabyte storage capacity per field. And if we recognize a data type, guess what? We'll display it for you. So let's say I got some photos. And just for fun, I'm going to drag and drop this Onto, this is the web browser, right? I'm going to take this and drag and drop this onto the web browser. I dragged it to the web browser, right? No coding. Web, de web developer, right? Uh, that's pretty cool, right? OK. So you can see everybody gets that information all at the same time, which is really nice. Again, I didn't have to code anything. This comes for free for me. So all right, I can do this. And I can do this in, in both directions, too. So let's say I'm out in the field with my iPad. And I tap in here. I can use the camera to take a photo, uh, record video, record audio. Uh, maybe I've got some photos already um, stored here from previous. You see? Yeah, I got a photo over here. I don't know. I'll choose just one randomly, add it in there, and then everybody gets to see it right away. Right? So it works in both directions. It's really, really nice. All right. So let's add some other things. Um, this is a mobile app. Most of us are used to having in a mobile app list of all the stuff on the left side and the details on the right. We tap on, one, on something on the list, and we see the detail on the right. That sort of UI uh, stuff is called master detail. In some uh, platform, it's pretty hard to accomplish. Here, we make it very, very easy. I'm going to move this stuff here to the right just a little bit. And I'm going to go here to my toolbar. There's a tool here called the portal tool. Portals allow me to view information and kind of list um, records, if you will. So I'm just going to draw one over here and say I want to list assets. And scroll 
only when scrolling, click OK. What do I want to view? I don't know. Maybe the, the name is the only field I want to view there. And I'll make some changes for aesthetics purposes only. Maybe we uh, make this stretch and we make that field, I don't know, no lines. There we go. So I'm going to save the changes, and there we go. We've got a master detail already running. We don't have to do anything. We didn't program anything. It's up and running. No binding or anything, none of that fun stuff. Uh, no events that I have to program. It just works. And even if I do a search here, so you say if I search here for everything that's a DSLR, it searches and it automatically updates for me. Right? So I don't have to program that, which is really nice. It saves me a lot of time. And on my iPad, I get the exact same UI. Really nice. All right, so we've got master detail up and running, which is really nice. I want to bring some other stuff. We had that other spreadsheet that we said before. It has the history. I kind of want to show that real quick. So um, let's do that. I'm also running out of space, so I'm going to use a trick that we all love, which is tabs. So here from the toolbar, I'm going to choose tab control. And just like almost everything in FileMaker, I'm just going to draw it out as so. That looks good. And I'll create the tabs that I want. I want one here for the history. I'm going to use another one here for, I don't know, maybe the status, and maybe the purchase info. I don't know. And maybe we'll do full justification because it looks a lot nicer. There we go. All right, so I'll save the changes real quick. Um, we have that there, so it's completely blank here, but we've got here working tabs already, which is really nice. All right, so let's add some stuff here. I want to bring in that other spreadsheet, so I am going to import that other spreadsheet. Uh, here it goes. Click OK. And I'm going to create a brand new table with that. And as before, that first row is going to use field names. Go ahead and click Import. And there we go. We got imported over 900 rows of information there. It's really nice. But I want to display it over here. So, just over here. So, what I want to do is I want to show everything that all of the, the history that's uh, relate it right to the asset that I'm viewing over here. So I'm going to use another portal. I'm going to open this up and kind of draw in over here. Now, so far we haven't done anything that's relational, right? There is a relational database uh, underneath here. And oh, so far everything has been native FileMaker stuff. So I'm going to go here to the Manage Database to create that join between these two tables that we have so far, which by the way, they're listed over here. These are the tables that we've created. Uh, we've got the fields. And here's the relationship graph. The relationship graph is kind of like an entity a relation, a diagram that is really just for the joints, for the, what we call relationships in FileMaker. So here I can view these. And to create that join, all I have to do is drag and drop between the fields that I want to uh, use in this relationship. So here I've got asset ID and asset ID, so just drag and drop. And when I do this, the relationship is in, it's bidirectional, so it works in both directions. I don't have to um, set this up more than once. And here, click OK. Maybe we'll do this here only when scrolling. Click OK, and then I can add which fields do I want to include there. Maybe we just include the start date and the end date. I don't know. There we go. Save the changes, and that's it. Now we're viewing the history for each one of these for each one of these, uh, for each one of these assets. As simple as that, we just created a relationship. Now, we said that we were going to uh, integrate SQL data, right? So let's say we've we've built our data, we build our, our apps, we're starting to build our apps it's really nice, and we have, but we have already some existing uh, systems in our organization that are using I don't know some SQL data source, and we want to link it to that. Here's a cool thing. I can go over here where it says manage external data sources, and I can link FileMaker Server to any external data source that we have. So I already have uh, the MySQL already set up, right? We've got an ODBC, we've got a DSN already set up. This is, I did this beforehand because it's really boring. Um, but I'll specify it over here. There we go. Click on it. We'll provide some credentials. Look away. There. So once I've provided credentials for it, now when I go back here into, into my uh, relational model over here, now I can add a brand new table, and I can choose what the source is going to be. And because I added that, that uh, SQL data source, I can choose from any of the tables that is available from, from there as well. So any tables I had there, I can choose. I'll click here OK. And there it is. This table 
is in another server, MySQL in this case, and I can start accessing. And FileMaker will treat it almost as a native FileMaker table. So just to kind of show you, if I click OK, I'm going to navigate. It created a layout just for me, just for that particular table. And this, is, this data that we see here is not in FileMaker, is in MySQL and another server out there. And I could link to SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, you know, sky's the limit there. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. So this data is completely bi-directional. It's live. So if I made any changes here, for example, if it tries to it tries to uh, update whenever a, a, a meaningful event happens. So for example, uh, over here, if I try to do if I did a I don't know if I change this here to something else like if I type in here John. In the background, we're not seeing it, but it's actually sending a SQL command to, uh, to the server and making those changes for me. If you make a change over there. Well, this is an external update to the table, most of the file. Yes. So it won't update like immediately there unless something else happens. So if I you know, move to another record and come back over here, it'll refresh, okay. things like that. If it's, not our, you know, if it's not a file maker native table, like the stuff that we did before, that's for our own engine. We can take care of that. We can do some really cool stuff. But most of that side, like live data, you know, data propagation, that's usually not built into most database engines out there, right? We do it for ours. Um, so we could do some really cool stuff with this. Can you create a new record external? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, this is completely bi directional and, and live. Uh, we want to show the data of SQL Server, of SQL table, but do not want them to update, like change the fields. Is there any way to stop them doing that? Yeah, absolutely. So the question is if we don't want you know, everybody to make changes to this you know, SQL data that's, that's over here. And in both directions, yes. Um, first of all, it will not bypass the security that it's already in SQL Server Oracle. If you have those security, it will not bypass it. It's whatever, right? <laughs> it respects those. Uh, second of all, then you can add security in here as well on top of that. So maybe the, your connection does have access to those, to those fields, but you want to limit your users through this app to maybe not. And you can fine tune those as well. Um, sometimes you only need read access, so maybe you just want to, you know, from from the you know, have your DBA set it up so that maybe it's just a view, uh, some, something like that. So it's up to you. It will not bypass the security you have in there as well. So the question is, does it copy the data? This data is completely live. There is no, you know, with the exception of some ca some minor caching. This is completely live. To that, to that ODBC data source. But if I wanted to, yeah, this is the original, the original data. If I wanted to import that data into a, maybe a FileMaker native table, I can absolutely do that. I can send a command, do a SQL query, import that in. But what I'm showing right now is completely live. The cool thing about this is that there's no SQL, right? I didn't do anything. And I'm doing, um, I can do searches if I want to. Search for every name that, every record that has a name that starts with J. The, qu the query on that, right? You know, I'm not a SQL jock, right? I, 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 I'm only, I only know, you know enough to be dangerous, right? But that takes a little bit. It takes some, it takes some writing to do. I can just search here just by example, which is really nice. All right, so I want to link these, this, this information here with what we already had, so I want to utilize that because there's checking in and checking out, but I already have employees, so why not link these two? So the checkout history is a FileMaker. Native table, employees is SQL. So I've got employee ID here, and I've got ID over there. So let's make a link. Let's make a relationship. Just made a join between these, these two tables. And I could link, by the way, to different sources. So this could have been you know, one table in SQL Server, one in Oracle, and a FileMaker native table. And it can do and integrate all these things at the same time. We've got some customers that have a lot of fun with that. All right, so here in the history, Maybe we'll, uh, we'll add that field. Maybe we'll add, let me move this around. Maybe we'll move that. And I want to add from employees, which again is a complete external. Maybe we'll add, I don't know, first name. We'll add that in there. There. So that's the first name of all employees that we have from a completely other system. We just link that information there. Let's do some other, let's do some better stuff, right? This is, this is the SQL data source, right? These are the fields. I got first name and last name. I don't have a full name. Let's create one. So I'm going to go over here. 
employees, and I'm going to add a new field. Uh, full name, calculation. It's going to be first name, space. How many times have we all done this? And the result of this is going to be text. That's it. That's our calculation engine, by the way. Very, very easy. Click OK. We've got that new field. So I'm going to change this field from first name to full name. That is. That calculation does not live on MySQL. It lives over here. We're doing it on the fly. With the data that we're caching in there, we perform that calculation. So we can extend that data that we have there, that schema that we have over there, without touching and making changes to the original schema. Right? We're just extending that. Sometimes we need to do some crazy things, but we don't want everybody. We don't have to modify that original uh, data source, which is pretty nice. Right? All right, so let's start building some other stuff over here. Uh, I'm going to bring here the status, maybe. We'll, um, maybe we'll add status as a field. Oh, add a label. There we go. And I don't know, maybe we'll include. How about we capture the signature? I like that. Let's do that. So I'll add here a signature. I don't think we have one. We don't have a signature. And let's do that. Let's add a signature. We'll bring that over here. So we can show some fun stuff. There we go. Go into browse mode. Here's the status. All right, so status is either in or out. Right now it's a text field. I can make changes to that. I don't like that because a lot of people are going to make what? They're going to make a lot of mistakes. Right? So let's edit that. Let's make this so that they don't make mistakes. And let's make this into a radio button. So choose that over here. We'll make a change. Say the control style. These are the different contro control styles I have for my fields. I'm going to make this into a radio button set. And the options are going to be either, I'm going to call this list of options in out. These are the options I have. Maybe we'll make this look nicer. There we go. Now it's only either in or out. Now people can't make mistakes. That wasn't hard, right? What about the signature capture, right? I want to make sure that people, when they sign in or sign out, they, we get their signature. So all I did was create a, a container field. And I'm going to bring up my iPad. What happens over here with container fields is really interesting because, put that over here. Because you know we're part of Apple, so <laughs> we want to make sure we take advantage of everything that these iOS devices can bring, bring to the table. So over here by tab where it says signature, I get a list of really amazing options. We can capture directly from the camera. using You can capture uh, photos, video. We can use the microphone to capture audio. Um, we can do barcode scanning using the built-in camera without no other reader or anything like that. We can also do signature capture. So it's native in there. It's built in it's for free. So if I tap in here, signature, I've got a built-in signature capture. I can use stylus and Apple Pencil on my finger and get a signature. And immediately back home, right back at the office, we see that there. Now what happens is a lot of people tap on that and you get too many options. What happens if you give your users a lot of options? They're going to mess it up. So we don't want to give them options. So I'm going to erase this. And we want to make it so that it automatically goes into signature, signature capture. So I'm going to go back over here to FileMaker Pro Advance, go into layout mode, click on this. And here's something interesting in FileMaker. We've got buttons in the platform. But literally, we can make any object on the layout into a button. That includes text labels. And also, fields can actually be a button. So I'll choose over here. Here, set this, set this field up as a button. And what do I want to do? Is it a, just one command, or do I want a whole subroutine, or what we call a script? I just need one command. I'll bring this up over here. And here's our script editor. You can't make any mistakes here. So we feel we kind of shield you out from making any, any exceptions or syntax errors. And I just need to do an insert from the device. Here are the options for the insert. I want to put this into the signature field. And the options are either from the camera, library, microphone. I want the signature. I'll choose that. Uh, I don't know, your signature. We'll do that. We'll do some prompts there, but we'll see, keep it simple. All right, so bring back here my iPad. Whoops. All 
All right, my iPad is updating. Let's add some other stuff over here. Layout mode, I think I had a logo here somewhere. I want to drag that in there just to make things look nice. I'll drag that in there. That's too big. Maybe I'll make this smaller. There we go. Maybe we add a title over here. I don't know. Ah. Add, there we go. Nope. All right, all right. Okay, we'll do that. Put it there. Maybe let's change the size of this. That's too small. Uh, maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger. And maybe we'll change. That looks good. I don't know. Maybe we'll change the color too. Let's make it white. There we go. That looks good. It's starting to look nice. All right. It's starting to look a lot better. All right. Let's bring up the iPad over here. It's starting to look a lot nicer. And I'm going to tap in over here where it says Signature. And that should trigger our button that goes directly into Signature Capture. There we go. Now, no user errors, which is really nice. Right? Again, I can take this very, very far. We saw at the beginning uh, we can you know, complete, uh, create complete um, uh, ERPs with this. The, um, should bring up over here. <clears throat> Just so you can see that everything that we've been doing here so far also translates to the web browser. All right. So as we've been building, this has been automatically updating over here as well. So you we can see all the stuff happening here as well. So it's really, really nice. All right. How long have we taken? About 20, 25 minutes or so like that, right? Uh, zero script bit. I think this is starting to look Quite nice as an app, right? Don't you agree? It looks nice, right? Awesome. All right. Because I don't want to go too long. And as you can see, I can take this very, very far. We've got a lot of organizations who are starting to use these type of tools to not only empower um, those uh, uh, kind of citizen developers, those who are knowledge workers, who are, who are problem solvers, in organizations who don't have maybe a programming background to, all, to you know, kind of um, auto-serve and, and, and uh, be able to, to solve their own problems creating apps. But also for us, right, professional developers, to have a really rapid uh, way of creating uh, not just full-blown, full just, not just prototypes, but also full-blown applications that we can integrate with everything else in the organization. It's not about throwing away all the tools that we already have. It's about complementing those, right? We're filling that gap between those appliance apps and the enterprise systems that we already have so that we can have all the tools and say yes to pretty much any type of, of project out there. All right, so enough of me talking. <laughs> um, we do have, like I said, we do have two partners uh, of ours here and I kind of want to give them a, a couple of minutes to tell you a little bit about uh, who they are and um, how they're using the platform and what kind of solutions and problems they're helping to solve to our customers. So, um, John, did you want to take a minute? Yeah? Hi, my name is John Matthewson. Uh, I run a company called Keo Logic. We're located about 40 miles from here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Yeah, we're, we have nine people and we're, we're growing. We're, our goal is to get up to 15 in the year or so. And we are using FileMaker to do, to do rapid application development. And what, what Ronnie's just outlined really has scaled tremendously over the years. And I wanted to give you an example of a project that we're working on. Uh, one of the companies that's the leading company that, that rents uh, jewelry cases to places like the Javits Center, and we're talking tens of thousands of jewelry cases, not just a few, is using FileMaker now to replace older systems that they had. So we were able to deploy for them rapidly an complete order-taking system, a show management system that they run on the iPad so they can run around at the show and do service requests. They can take photographs of errors and immediately all of their information is uploaded and, and coordinated. Right now we're working on their inventory systems where we're going to have RFID readers in their warehouses and those will be saving to an SQL database that will communicate with FileMaker and update status of warehouse in, in both in Las Vegas and in New York. So you see that, and, and another interesting thing is, for example, they want to have a booth planner so people can rent their cases and plan the layout of the booth. And we're going to be building that in JavaScript using the web connection capabilities of FileMaker. That, that whole integration thing that, that, that Ronnie talked about is really powerful and is giving us the whole world of web integration 
SQL integration in FileMaker. So FileMaker is increasingly working like a hub that you can connect into. So we're hiring engineers, we're hiring people that are experts. We've got a guy on staff who's a former professional photographer. Um, but we're also increasingly hiring people that are web designers and those sorts of people because FileMaker now is breaking into these new worlds. So it's a very exciting world and, and FileMaker is, uh, these guys have given us an awesome tool to work with and, and I think people, on, so people who are outside the FileMaker community underestimate just how powerful it is and how useful it is. So. Thank you, John. <laughs> Uh, my name is Marshall Michaels. I, uh, I work. I'm the CEO of a, of a company in DC. Uh, we're, we're called Mainspring. We've been we've been helping companies in the innovation workspace for since 1996. Uh, I've I've been doing this since I don't know FileMaker two or something like that. How many people had heard of FileMaker before you came here today? That's that's about the right percentage. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's like it's like one of the best hidden secrets ever. I I just want to give you a couple examples of, of the work that we've done, um, and and uh, tie back into what Ryan was talking about. You, have you ever seen that kids' movie Fly Away Home, where they taught the uh, not the whooping cranes, but the cranes to follow the helicopters? And basically, with the whooping crane, you can if you if you teach it to migrate one time, it knows how to do it forever. So I'm on the field, I'm putting the whipping crane outfit on because they're not allowed to see the human form, and I'm helping them um, uh, track data out in the field um, to, you know, to breed, who, who, you know, the sex, the whole thing. Uh, another project that we did was for the uh, Treasury Department. Don't, don't counterfeit money. They're all over this stuff. They, they have it down. Uh, where they were, they were tracking data and, and, and they were moving things around there. Another one, um, another one we did was a, uh, uh, if you go to Constitution Avenue and 15th Street, there's a circus there, and you can go to circus training class. So let that sink in for just a sec. There is a circus training class in D.C. We help them uh, with, their, with their events and the registration and things like that. The common denominator across those very wide range of apps is that they all started with a spreadsheet, they all started with a, with a problem that they had to collect some data, uh, they all had to do some automation, and it all delivered the true promise of technology, which is scalability, allowing them to do more with less. What Ronnie's shown you here is how you future-proof that. So you can, you can create this little you know, stovepipe application that you know, the workplace people can work on and, and IT is, you know, kind of around it. But the future proofing of it is actually being able to connect it to SQL and, and allowing it to grow in different ways. So it starts with a very small kindling of, of maybe, you know, a, a process that you're trying to automate or, or Excel that, that you're trying to get rid of. We see Excel abuse all the time out there. So that, that whole uh, innovation area, it, those are the two things you can look for. How do I automate some processes? How do I, how do I get it sell? That will get you on the fairway. What Ronnie just showed you future proofs it so that it can continue to grow with your, with your organization. So, thanks so much. Thanks, Marshall. All right, so this is the point where I open it up. Uh, any questions that you might have, um, go ahead and try to answer them. Yes, sir? Any particular reason why there's been no marketing? No one's ever heard of this. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> never heard of that question before. Uh, why is it that? Like, I'd like to answer that. He'd, li he'd like to answer that. I've, for I've actually been using FileMaker since 1986. And database developers look down on it tremendously. Uh, in general, because of how FileMaker evolved and also because a lot of non-programmers paint themselves into a corner by using FileMaker, and they want the database people to clean it up. So that, that creates part of it. But there is a flexibility in FileMaker that doesn't exist anyplace else. And I've used it actually to reverse engineer SQL databases that have been through several database developers who have quit. And now there's no roadmap to the database. Using that same technique that you showed with the relationship a diagram, you funnel everything into FileMaker sometimes to the point where you can't even really visualize what you're working on, <laughs> yeah. and then you painfully connect up all these old databases right. and sit down 
yeah. the content expert and clean them up. Yeah. So it becomes the database of the database. We right. annotate the fields, we annotate yeah. uh, which fields are deprecated in the SQL database. So it's a tremendous yeah. cleanup tool. Yeah. And we've had cases where everything else fails and then we reach yeah. back to file and then we really fix it. So. So I don't know where we haven't, you know, you know, you haven't heard of it before, but we're trying to change that, right? That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Does it integrate with Microsoft uh, Dynamics? Yes, um, it depends on your integration point, right? Um, so I believe Dynamics does have, they have REST API as well, and there's ODBC as well if you want to back, go in directly into the back end. But yes, you could. I've got some customers who have done it. There's, uh, there's several ways of doing it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I used to uh, work on uh, Borland Paradox 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, did, I mean, uh, you know, kind of the same question. Um, that product went away and, you know, um, I guess access is set on a review or whatever. But, um, sort of. Did FileMaker continue because, just because of Apple or, you know? Just no, we've been profitable for over 80 quarters. And, We're and pretty stable. And is there a counter, um, I mean, this is a very compelling you know, demonstration, but is there a counter argument to this? Like, why would you not use PubFileMaker? Like, when does it not work? I, that's, a, that's a great question. So the, the question is, you know, when does it not work? When is it not maybe the right fit? And I'm a huge proponent of the right tool for the right job, right? I don't think this, you're not going to create the next, you know, you know um, I don't know, a Amazon storefront with this, right? That's not, that's not what it's about. Um, I think it's the right. I think it's 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 not about replacing your existing tools, but it's about augmenting and com complementing that. Right? It's another tool in your tool set. So, you know, right now a, lo a lot of us we we create in our organizations. We have we're usually a you know an X shop or a Y shop, right? And we have this one tool set. And if the project that comes in doesn't fit that, we you know we kind of run around and we say no a lot of times because a lot of times, especially in large organizations, and I know what this is like. Um, if it's too big, it's too costly, we're going to say, I'm sorry, right? Departments run on budget. We can't do that. And the idea now is that, you know, tools like this allow us to say yes to any type of, any type of project. So if the project requires a lot of modifications, especially for mobile device uh, uh, apps, require a lot of iterations, right? So it's, it's, it's very small, requires a lot of change. We don't have clear requirements. Uh, we know the requirements are going to start changing a lot. We've got a customer who, who advocates, who's kind of uh, coining the term of uh, disposable apps, right? He says, look, mobile apps in my organization, they don't last more than six months. So why am I going to spend $100,000 on something that it's not going to be there next year? It doesn't make any sense, right? So tools like this allow them to, uh, to prototype and create those apps, deploy them, and start using them without that huge budget that was required with any other type of tools. So it's about choosing the right tools for the right job. I, it's what I propose, right? Right. And I found that the example of how also how FileMaker scales well is we have one client that, that about twenty thousand people log on every week. They come into a MySQL database and they book. They do a lot of sampling and retail stores, so they have these sudden rush where they'll say, okay, we have 2,000 stores that need volunteers to come in and work in the stores. So they all sign up, and then it communicates with a back office that's all run in FileMaker. So you've got a, a very heavy stream of data back and forth, including resumes and all sorts of things. So there is the ability to integrate with other systems to scale. So uh, that's one of the reasons why FileMaker is really remains very versatile in a lot of different situations. Got a question over here? Yeah. Uh, rule method reporting. Uh, I know that you can't have everything in 20 minutes, but, <laughs> uh, but I saw a rule dashboard that you have one thing. Uh, yeah. uh, so, how do you compare that to people who have like um, pivot tables and things like that? Sure. So, I mean, my, my wife is an accountant, so she's a Excel jock, right? She like knows it inside out. The first question she asked me uh, was that, and it all depends, right? Oh, so the question is, you know, uh, for reporting, um, you know, how does it? What are the tools like? And so things like you know pivot tables and manipulating data to to create to roll up reports, right? So it all depends. There's a lot of things, and because FileMaker is not limited to the tools that it has there, it has some really good tools for reporting. There's built-in charting and things like that, but it's not limited to that. So an example is we've got a, 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 an object in the, uh, in the layout uh, interface. It's called the, the web viewer. And what it does is basically kind of like a, 
kind of like a mini web browser that you can manipulate, can use for whatever you want. So things like, you know, there's so many data visualization libraries out there. There are uh, JavaScript, right? You can tap into those directly with data that you have already in FileMaker or linking with SQL data sources and then uh, create the data visualization inside of that, of that web viewer. Sky's the limit as far as like, you know, doing some other types of manipulations. Most of the time, especially for like, Pivot tables, it's more about kind of how we model the data <laughs> more than anything else. There's no difference uh, here. You can either do it in FileMaker, you can do it in some other system and bring that, that information in. What if you have something you like and uh, you have management that says, great, send it to me an email every Yep, absolutely. So the question is, you know, if some sort of scheduling and emailing. Um, both FileMaker Server and FileMaker Cloud has built in um, scheduling, so you can schedule scripts, the, the kind of our uh, procedural uh, type of, of automation. So you can schedule scripts. It has built-in email capability, uh, both either through your client, if you have, uh, if you're using Outlook or something like that, you can send through there. Or if you have SMTP, it can automatically send those through there. Just provide the credentials. Um, as far as PDF, we have our own uh, PDF library, so you can save as a PDF from any one of our clients, from either iOS, web browser even, and from the desktop. And they'll all look exactly the same because we're using the same library. So even from a web browser, anything that you can see visually right, on the layout can be printed to a PDF and attached to an email, for example. So yeah. Yep, multiple, <laughs> multiple questions, he <laughs> says. Application you create, is there a code behind uh, the, the, the apps in FileMaker? Because there's always something, there's always a customer which wants something which is not easily customized. Yes, so there's always something that somebody wants that's not there. So we make it very easy. So if, if there's something out there and we don't believe that you're going to find everything that you need out of the box, right? There's probably going to be something that, that hasn't been done or that we didn't think about or something like that. If it's not there. Of a grid inside a grid, yes. So there are several ways, and actually some of our partners have created some really cool tools around that. There's several ways of, of kind of skinning that cat. You can either use a web viewer and you can use, you know, a myriad of, of tools that are out there, you know, through JavaScript and, and HTML to create any type of object that you want. Uh, or you can use our plugin uh, uh, SDK. It's in C++ and you can, sky's the limit of what you can do. So you can, with that, you can add new functions, new script steps, um, anything that you want that we haven't thought about. So you can do that. It's probably if somebody already has done something like that already. We've been around for a long time. Uh, so usually, whatever you're looking for, I'd suggest to kind of do a Google search. We've probably somebody's done it before. So, application you create, mm -hmm. right? assuming there is a company you aspire to develop, what do I need? If there's a what? There is a company you aspire to develop. Yes. What do I need to, to start using uh, If you have multiple developers, they can all work on the same application at the same time. Yeah. So I need, so. I need a file maker. You need FileMaker Pro Advanced, FileMaker Server, FileMaker Server, or FileMaker Cloud. Yep. Uh, I assume I can run FileMaker Server in Azure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, is there a cost to end users? Yes. That's that's where you want to talk with her or any of our salespeople. Yes, there is a cost for for users. Absolutely. Let's say I have a thousand end users which are using this app. Mm -hmm. so I will be paying something per. We've got different models, different licensing models, either per user or concurrency or kind of simultaneous users. So it depends on what your, your particular project requires. So we can talk offline and, and kind of figure out. Yes, there is a cost. If, you, if anyone wants licensing costs, you can grab my card and, on the table in the back and contact me, and I can give you whatever license you Yeah, we're not giving it away for free. We're not there yet. <laughs> Somebody's got to pay my salary. And the last, very simple question, who is your biggest competitor? That's an interesting question. For the longest time, it was paper and pencil. <laughs> they do nothing, right? It's kind of status quo. Um, I think you know, nowadays there's a huge emphasis on trying to um, help those knowledge workers create their own apps and also for IT professionals to uh, create apps a lot faster. So there's a lot of people that are, that are kind of getting into the workplace innovation platform category. Um, the, you know, there's there's a bunch of them. Some of the big names are, are starting to kind of get into this space as well. Um, it's just we've been doing it for a very long time, <laughs> right? I think this just validates what what we've been saying. Uh, so, 
Sure, I'll do that. Yeah, we've got a lot of people who, who don't use spreadsheets. They abuse spreadsheets. <laughs> so, yeah. Microsoft I'm, Access. Was that probably some, some, some I used yes. Access 20 years ago to create sure. a, a database for digital assets at a, at a yeah. production company mm -hmm. for music, you know, you know uh, B-roll, stuff like that. Sure. Um, but it was not nearly. No, we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we, we have a lot of customers who have come over uh, from, from Access and other similar products. If I were to embed uh, my MyMaker application into an existing like, third-party front-end application, um, I guess, would you still get the instantaneous data, data propagation? That depends on how you do the integration. But yes, if, if you're using FileMaker, um, so the question is if you integrate FileMaker with some other tools, you know, would you still get like the automatic data uh, uh, propagation and other features that, that I showed here today. Yes, it depends on how you do the integration, though. You know, I'll put that caveat there. Uh, so it depends on how you do it. But for the most part, yeah, if you're, if you're, running, our, if you're running our software, you'll, you'll get those benefits. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> One last question. Um, is there an API and um, would there be a native Android uh, app? Oh, was it a question about the API? I'm sorry. Is there an API? Is there an API? Uh, there are several APIs. Is there one in specific that you're looking for? No, just I mean, uh, if we want to build our own client. Gotcha. So, so as far as APIs, we've got several. There is a REST API. There is an XML API. There's a PHP API. Uh, we've got a few SDKs. We have an iOS app SDK. So you can take what, what I built here today. You can take that and make it into a standalone native iOS app, so completely disconnected from everything, which you then can di distribute through you know, MDMs and, and, and uh, you know, Apple Enterprise stores and things like that. Um, is there what was the question about Android? Uh, Android. Um, did I mention we're an Apple company? <laughs> Bad joke. Uh, no, we're, we're, the, the, the answer really is we're committed to the iOS platform as far as native, uh, native mobile applications. Um, but our WebDirect technology, FileMaker WebDirect, what I showed earlier, the web browser, that works perfectly fine on, on Android and other platforms. So if you need to access it from other mobile devices, we can use that. So you could, that's a public API? Sorry, that? Is that a public API? Do we have a public API? Uh, anything specific? No, so like that API that you were just referring to, is that a public API or is that private or is it licensed? Uh, the, all of our APIs come with the platform, so there is some purchasing involved if, yeah, if, if that's the question. Uh, you can get a trial version of all of these. You can download and start playing around with them. Um, on community.filemaker.com, which is free to enter in and to kind of interact with other developers and read the news and stuff like that, there's a paid version of that we call the FileMaker Developer Subscription. That's only $99 a year, I want to say, and it has some other benefits, like we'll give you pre-release versions of the software and stuff like that. One of the coolest uh, benefits is that you get a FileMaker server developer license uh, included with that. So you can download and start playing around with it. That won't expire as long as your, your, your subscription is, is valid. So for $99, you can start getting your, your feet wet and, and trying it out and start developing. And there is, I don't know if you said this, but on our website, you can just go and there's a button, try, and yep. there's a 45-day download of FileMaker Pro Advanced. Um, so you can use it to your heart's content for 45 days. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about it or tools for learning it or any kind of information that you need, um, please take my card and contact me. We really are looking for people who would like to develop or try FileMaker and we want to support you guys in what you're doing. So, I don't know. Are you saying, yeah. no. Any other questions? Good? No? Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>